In this video, we're going to talk about some additional factors that influence solubility. And what we're going to focus on is um, environmental factors. So in the last video, we looked at um, intrinsic factors of the solution, like the properties of the solute and the solvent. And we looked at things like lattice energy, hydration energy, and this general concept of like dissolves like. In this video, we're going to look at some things that have nothing to do really with the solution itself, but are sort of um, surrounding that solution and might affect it. Uh, and these factors would be temperature and pressure. So our first example is the effect of temperature on the solubility of gases. And it turns out that gases are less soluble in liquids at higher temperature. And this should kind of make sense, right? So when you put a gas into a liquid and dissolve it, um, temperature is going to have a big impact on that because gas is the kinetic energy of the gas molecules changes significantly as you change the temperature. So when you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the kinetic energy of the gas molecules that are dissolved. And the higher the kinetic energy, the more likely it is that they are, they're able to escape that liquid and go back into the gas phase. So if you've ever opened up a soda bottle um, and you compare opening up a soda bottle that's been sitting at room temperature versus a soda bottle that's been in the refrigerator, uh, what you're going to notice is that the one that's at room temperature, when you open the seal, that's going to release a lot more bubbles and it's going to be more vigorous than one where you have had it um, sort of chilled down to refrigerator temperatures. The cooler it is, the more stable those gas molecules are uh, inside the liquid and the less likely they are to come out. Now, actually, this has a very significant um, impact on our environment. So the, uh, so the, the problem with solubility of gases and temperature in the environment is uh, the issue of global warming. So as temperatures increase, um, or if temperatures you know, increase because of global warming, warming uh, a major consequence of this that can cause problems in aquatic environments is the fact that um, fish and other aquatic life require dissolved oxygen in water in order to survive. So if the planet is heating up um, and the atmospheric temperature rises and the water temperatures of the oceans and lakes increase, what's going to happen is, is we're going to get less and less dissolved oxygen in water because as the temperature goes up, the solubility of oxygen in water goes down. And so this can have big impacts on aquatic ecosystems. And, you know, you can, you can occasionally see this when um, temperatures get very, very warm. You'll see that, uh, uh, that, you'll see that uh, aquatic life suffers because of lower oxygen levels in the water. And another factor that can come into play with uh, warming temperatures and, you know, dissolved gases is carbon dioxide. The oceans, uh, the Earth's oceans are a major sink for uh, carbon dioxide. There's a tremendous amount of carbon dioxide that's dissolved in the ocean. And as if temperatures uh, are increasing, what's going to happen is, is this carbon dioxide is going to start to gradually come out of the oceans because it's going to be less soluble and go into the atmosphere. And you can get this cycle where um, as you know, you put more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, uh, it causes more carbon dioxide to come out of the oceans, and then you kind of get this, this runaway effect that they call that. So these are major things to consider um, and really demonstrates why the solubility of gases as a function of temperature is really important, both for biology and for the environment. Now, another factor that we're going to consider is uh, the effect of temperature on the solubility of solids. And it turns out that solids are generally more soluble at higher temperature. And the reason for this really boils down to lattice energy. So, you know, no matter what, you have to overcome the ionic bonds inside of uh, a ionic compound in order to get it to dissolve. And so generally speaking, as you increase the temperature, it becomes, you're basically adding energy to the system and, you know, helping to overcome that endothermic process of, of lattice energy. In general, also, it kind of makes sense. The more energy you give a system, the easier it is for these ionic bonds to sort of vibrate and once they reach uh, like a, a large enough vibration from the temperature, they can start to kind of break apart and interact with the water molecules. Uh, there are some exceptions to this, and some solids do become less soluble at higher temperature, and there are reasons for that, and it has to do with the hydration energy, um, because, you know, as you increase temperature, the hydration energy goes down in some cases. So, um, you know, that balancing act between lattice energy and hydration energy plays a big role when it comes to temperature and the dis dissolving of ionic compounds. So the second major uh, environmental factor that we're going to talk about is pressure. And this is very much significant for uh, gases dissolved in liquids. And it should make sense that as you increase the pressure 
of a gas. And, and what we're talking about is the partial pressure of the gas, right? So as you increase the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, for example, over uh, a liquid like water, you're going to increase the solubility. Um, and we kind of see this every day. So uh, when you, if we go back to the soda bottle example, when you look at a soda bottle, um, that bottle that's closed and sealed from the factory contains um, carbon dioxide that's dissolved in the liquid plus carbon dioxide gas over the liquid. So inside of your soda bottle is a, so if you have your liquid here, there is carbon dioxide gas and there is carbon dioxide aqueous in the solution. And there's an equilibrium that's sort of formed and they pressurize it. That's why um, soda bottles are very rigid and hard to compress because there's this uh, compressed CO2 that's been pumped in there to keep the carbon dioxide dissolved. Now what happens is when you open the seal of that bottle, you release the pressure of the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So the carbon dioxide that was placed above goes away and now the carbon dioxide gas comes out of the solution. So the pressure that was there goes down and we see a shift in that equilibrium from the dissolved carbon dioxide going into the gas phase. So that, that pressure that was there was keeping that carbon dioxide dissolved. And we can actually quantitatively talk about the effect of pressure on solubility using Henry's law. And what Henry's law says that the solubility of a gas is equal to the Henry's law constant, uh, K sub H times the partial pressure of a gas. So uh, S is equal to the solubility. Uh, and typically this has units of mass of solute per volume of solvent. Uh, we have the Henry's law constant. Um, and this is generally specific to a is is specific to a gas at a given temperature. So this is for for example for CO two at twenty five degrees Celsius would be an example. Um, and so the Henry's law constant will change depending on the gas and the temperature. And then P is the partial pressure of the gas that's above the liquid. And so if we're talking about carbon dioxide, it would be the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide. And so generally speaking, what we do with Henry's law is we use it to come up with basically a simple equation that allows us to relate the solubility at one pressure versus the solubility at another pressure. So for example, if we take Henry's law and we say, well, there's a solubility at um, one pressure, uh, we'll call that solubility one at partial pressure one, and we want to know the solubility um, at another pressure where we have uh, the solubility two, which is the one that we're interested in at partial pressure two, we can set up a set of equations where we can relate S1 over P1 to the Henry's law constant and S2 over P2 to the Henry's law constant. And doing this, we can then set that we can then say that well, S1 over P1 is going to equal S2 over P2 as long as it's for the same gas at the same temperature. And so now we have the ability to derive a relationship between solubility and pressure. So um, there are some examples of this in the textbook that you'll do, but it's a very basic calculation and it's something uh, that will allow you to make this relationship. And because it's a direct relationship, the solubility will go up as the pressure goes up.